Uh, yes, I have a big you ready thing. Ready to start of, for eight hours, Eric? I got eight hours of blueberries right here. I'm all set. All right, awesome. We can't. You can't share them with us. Yeah, I can. Okay, we're live. Hey, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the BGG Show live. I am. He, I'm your host, Scott Alden, also known as Aldi. I'm joined once again by my lovely co-host, Lincoln Damers. Hey, Scott. Hey, Eric. And Eric Martin. Martin. If you're still here, Eric. That's right. I'm not in Dallas yet, but you guys are. We right. Are. But you That's are you are as equally as pixely as always. <laughs> this is what we, we get to this. see when we are recording live. That's the wait, say something, Eric. I can just talk for hours and just move very slowly. I'll, I'll freeze police squad style. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da So let me uh, hide my microphone or my headphones. headphones? Okay. okay. So what are you guys up to? Um, so we we basically reset up my camera in my room here to see more games. Like I was no, I was previously shooting that direction, which you can't see. Previously on Police Squad, and it was very limited number of games. Now we have games. all these games, games in the background and shelves that and you may not recognize. Games. Actually, these are um, not Kalox. No, they're from a Container Store. Right, they're from the Container Store called Scandia. Actually, you should bring up the chat room. I, 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 hey guys, if you're in chat, send us a question. We got no, we have no itinerary. We have no. Well, we'll talk plan. a little bit what's going on. Obviously, I'm here for BGG Con Spring, sure. which is cool. Uh, helping Scott deal with his massive amount of games that go to the library, and um, turn your volume up a little. Turn it up. Your your internal. I'm speaking monologue. too quiet. Usually well, I can I'm see yelling. that. I can see that we're not. Oh hey yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah, usually I'm like screaming, so I'm trying not to scream, training myself not to yell so much. Um, but uh, we had definitely been getting ready, and Scott's got some software stuff that he's finishing up. And then, um, Eric, I guess you show up on Saturday to BGG Spring? Friday. Friday? Okay. Well, the Good. Spring Convention starts Friday, May 25th. It runs through Monday the 28th in Dallas, Texas. All the tickets are sold out, so please don't show up and hope to buy one. No, yes. We'll meet you I'm outside. Better, as of like last week, sorry. They're asking how big the library is. 6, the 000, library, right? oh my, which one? The BGG. Okay, the BGG library is over 6,000 games. We're bringing all 6,000 of those games to the library or to the show, and so you can check those out and play them at will. There's some time limits on everything, but mostly four to eight hours, I believe, is the the time limits for the older the older stuff's eight hours newer stuff's four hours which is plenty of time usually. yeah it is usually and if you're really smart you get it at the end of the night you can keep it overnight yeah if you check it out during right before midnight you can keep it overnight and play all day all night all that's day my and day all the night i'm a night owl the kinks so that's six thousand unfortunately this is three thousand five yeah this is a lot of games i have which, of i'm course, catching up to see scott it's pretty bad one of the rooms there's actually another room over there which maybe someday i should do a tour uh, it's yeah. just so ugly it's totally not anything like other people's collections like jason levine like oh his gosh. collection but is pristine he, yeah he's... mine is definitely not in that shape well scott's also realistic and he uh boxes the pro um expansions usually in the main box i throw so out every expansion a lot box. of people get disappointed i throw out all sleeves they go right into the we actually had oh, a the trash sleeves on the outside of the field box. of board game sleeves card sleeves i'm getting these card sleeves out of here yeah. <laughs> eric how big is your collection at home uh about 2500 i don't I, it's it's on the oh, that's a lot some of it's on the wall oh, i don't like having it in the background i don't know I like being able to yeah, look. I see three games. I see a kitty. That's all mine. Which cat's right. that? I have 2,500 games and three cats. Uh-oh. Uh Wait, hold the cat up again. Hold the kitty up. Hold it, hold it up again. And speak. That's yeah. right. Hey, we're ready to slash your face smart. You can't do that, though. He has no claws. He also has no teeth. Uh, he had a congenital dental uh, infection, so his gums would attack uh, his teeth. In any case, well, the, my mom's cat had some two things. She had them all pulled out too. So I, I meant to bring up when you talk about the library having six thousand titles. That's actually down a lot because we're having an auction. I don't know if you want to talk about that? Oh, we didn't talk about the storage. Oh, yeah, there's oh, there's five thousand games in storage. Wait, wait, okay. Let's let, let's bring up. Keep talking, Eric. I'm Phil here. Okay. Get the exact I don't know. If people can't hear my words. So. 
But yes, we're having an auction at BGG Spring where we've cleared out a lot of titles from the library. Flea market, flea market, not an auction. Flea market. Selling everything yeah, for 10 market. bucks. That is correct because there are fixed prices on the first day and then the prices drop for the second day and then for the third day as well. Um, I do not remember the organization where all the funds are being donated to, and Scott can talk about that. But the idea is uh, uh, Cafe um, Momentum. Yeah, I'll talk about it in a second. Okay. A lot of the. I'm finding numbers, but I'll talk about the, the, the charity in one second. So, a lot of the games, of course, were given to us at conventions where we broadcast. Uh, demonstrations and interviews and live streams and we ask for copies of the game to have them in the library so that people can play them at the conventions but some things are never checked out or we end up with more than we need so we're passing those on there was only one toilet rating related game i think we already talked about that was the Catane having the biggest uh bm <laughs> did, did someone ask about that they said how many uh kabuki kid maybe was said, how many toilet-related games did we bring back? Yeah, Kabuki Kid from Japan, which we only brought Katane, and I think you have that, so. Yeah, I do have Katane. That's the only one that's specific-related. You, um, you should bring that one to BGG Con. I should. I do not really know the rules, and someone has not yet published the overview video that we shot, so I'd have to go totally unknown. What are you trying to tell me? I edited it to the last possible minute before I left for Dallas, so. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was it's to Nikki. his detriment because he forgot half the stuff he was supposed to. Oh my bring. gosh, we forgot. I forgot all the Kit Kats. I forgot my, some of my medications, and I forgot all the oh, Kit yeah, Kats, and I forgot um, another thing that I've had at my house and kept away from Scott, so he wouldn't see it when he was there for Gamma, and it was going to be a surprise, and I forgot it. So it's now going to be so Gen Con. A Gen Con surprise. Awesome. That's good. Okay, I cannot figure out how to use this. The chat? I'm trying to break up the BGG storage library. Oh, the library. It's a lot. Oh, my God. Uh, oh. Most of us will be there for, I mean, Scott, uh, Eric, uh, Nikki's going to be there, um, Steph, Rodney, uh, Chad. Okay. Chad Roberts. Yeah, Chad Roberts, Chad Roberts going to be at Origins as well? Chaz Marler, Rodney Smith, Steph Hodge. Um, so we're talking about springs now. Beth Hiley. You. I said that. Me. Beth you. Hiley. Beth yeah. Hiley's coming? At Origins, yes. Oh, at Origins. Yes. So I thought. I'm talking about PGG Con. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, I think that's what they're asking. It's a basic average girl. Will you guys be at Origins this year? I'm going for the first time. Well, come Origins. and visit us for sure. It's a fun uh, event because we actually get to interface with the audience uh, much more there. And it seems like we have more fans there. So it's cool. Um, and it's we a are, great show. Come by. We are in Gaming Hall A, uh, booth A104. And we usually have a lot of empty time. We have a much less packed schedule. We're broadcasting for five days, but five days at Origins would be like 15 days at Gen Con, I think. Like, there's not. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Are we vibrating? Are we uh, guys auctioning off some friends to play with? Okay. So. <laughs> As of today, we have 4,933 games in the BGG storage. Wow. So we're bringing 2,000 of those to BGG Con Spring and putting them in a room. And you can go buy whatever you want, as much as you want. I think Actually, there might be a couple limits uh, for 10 bucks a game. No questions asked. <laughs> we're not going to. And you just take whatever you want. 10 bucks each. And so we're hoping to move a lot of games. And it's all for charity, 100%. And it's all cash and the the representative of the charity will be there on the first day to talk about it a little bit oh my gosh i'm gonna go pull this out of my ear you can ear butt out sorry i'm not a professional um it's cafe momentum in dallas and what it is is a full-on restaurant that hires youth youths, youths that have been in juvenile detention so basically been sent to the juvenile hall or whatever. Um, and then once they get out, they get the job and they apply for this and it's a year long process. So, and they go through all the stations of a restaurant, they get paid as a full-time person um, with a with a wage, not minimum wage, it's above minimum wage. And so um, I have personally gone to the, um, the restaurant, restaurant and um, had a meal cooked by the students and it's fantastic. And so I really, 
am excited about this um, charity. And the guy who in, uh, started it is his name is um, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, it's at cafemomentum.org, and there's a video there. And that video, I mean, it's a very it explains everything I just said basically in a better way and very cinema cinema cinematographic cinematographic. Um, and it's just Filmic. a great thing. And it changes their lives massively. Like the recidivism in Dallas, or at least with the stats that they have is 50% of the people who enter into juvenile detention, 50% chance of going back to jail. And the students who have been part of Cafe Momentum end up at around 11 or 12%, I think is what the recidivism rate is. So that is huge. Like that's a massive increase sorry, decrease of recidivism. And so I can't, when I, when I met, I didn't really meet him, but I went to the, to the restaurant and just saw it. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I wish I could do something about it. And then this kind of opportunity came around to sell games for charity. And we just, it just made sense. Like Michelle reminded me of it and, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm picking my charity. That's the one. And I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything better. So Cafe Momentum will get all the cash from these, um, sales that will happen this weekend starting friday i'm hoping we sell it all <laughs> twenty thousand dollars there's some good stuff in there there there's obviously you know it's basically stuff that we have taken out of the main library but there are plenty of good games in there and um i hope someone finds a gem or two or three or a thousand oh. There, there are plenty of games, I'm sure, in your library as well, where they are awesome games, and you look at them and you say, why don't I play them? And I'm sure a lot of that is in the exactly. library. Don't check it out, but yeah, it's a really good game. So that happens a lot. I don't know. I was thinking of that. Just, I don't know if you have Virgin-like games played. I brought Transamerica to our, our school club, where I have a game club once a week for kids like 7 to 9. And I wasn't sure if it'd be ideal, and yet they really just dove into it. And we played a couple of rounds. They asked to bring it back next week, and it's just awesome. And no one talks about Transamerica, and it's a fantastic game, but it's certainly not hyped or something that's going to be in the hotness. And, I don't know. Has it been in print all these years? I believe Rio Grande has kept it in print. I mean, there, there might have been some periods where it's it's lapsed, but it's never completely gone. I know they have a new edition of Trans Europa that they are releasing. And in Europe, Ravensburger has a new combined version of Trans America and Trans Europa in the same box that's going to be coming out in the second half of 2018. Much bigger than both of the boxes combined. Yeah, well, it's the standard Ravensburger long box. Yeah. So that's what it's going to be. So, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those games that it's awesome and you should play it more often, but I guess with the, with the way we're in, we're always pushing the new boundaries. So it's sometimes it's hard to go back and revisit the old games that we loved or still, we still love them, but um, um, getting them to the table is definitely hard when you've got a stack of 50 games that came out last quarter and you need to try them or want to try them. Yes. 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 I know. Well, there's always that. I mean, it's the, uh, I get, wrapped up in the excitement of what we should get. Oh, I got to get that. And then it sits on the shelf uh, wrapped. Um, and you should open them up just to make sure everything's in there. Um, some people are asking, uh, let's see what we got. Any, oh wait, first of all, um, basic average girl, is there a chance of playing board game with you guys at Origins? Well, Nikki will be demoing games from Asaday and Serpent Evil, so you can absolutely get a chance to play with her. Um, there's a possibility because we, come back and play sometimes at Origins. It's too bad you're not coming to Gen Con, which is much crazier. So, But we have a hot games room at that event where we are at every night. Um, yeah, we're usually like up on the bar on two. A bar on two, at yeah. At the Hyatt at night. And we play party and we games. we play party and games like and stuff. Um, and Eric gets sick. <laughs> Don't get sick this time, Eric. Only once. <laughs> Don't remind him. I'm just teasing, Eric. I, I, I'm going to avoid whatever you had to eat. I'm for sure about that. That's right. It's a BLT. Hey, mayonnaise on French fries. A BLT. Wow. BLT. How would a BLT get you sick? The mayonnaise. Bad tomatoes. Oh, it was the mayonnaise. Oh. Probably. I don't. I didn't. I didn't mean these guys. So. What was going on there? He just got sick. Yeah, I just suffered. Any other questions coming in? 
That was it. Um, okay, then uh, have you commented yet on the how you feel about the Asmodee being offered for sale? We haven't really talked about it. Oh, yeah. We just mentioned, actually, we talked about why they would be doing, oh, buying um, Love Letter in the last episode. Right. And then the, it was announced that, not announced, but it had been leaked that there's they're possibly going to sell Rumors. Uh, up for sale. And somebody said a, a billion, billion and a half dollars. Um, it's crazy. I don't. I don't know how it will work, right? Will there will they take it over and let the people that run Asmodee continue to run Asmodee and keep everything available that's available? I don't know. I mean, that's a weird Seems deal. Seems when you spend a billion and a half dollars, you want to control it one hundred percent and do it what you want with it. At least that's right. But what I would—I mean, you would think that they'd keep the games in print. I think that's what a lot. Well, of Well, yeah, you still want to make your money, and yes, why would the games go out of print? I mean, maybe some of the smaller titles would go out of print. Or not being printed. I guess that's sort of what happened when Hasbro oh, bought Con. Magic Con. the Gathering. When they bought Avalon Hill. I mean, that's that's going back. Or they bought Wizards of the Coast. They bought Wizards of the Coast. Now, Wizards of the Coast had a couple other games that. Yes. Right? Like um, Robo Rally. Was that a Wizards of the Coast? And um, there were a few other things. I mean, they had the Talislanta RPG. RPG. TSR. Yeah. They well, had that. They had a game with the flip book with the, where you would put the cards in the sleeves. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. There you go. Well, I don't know that game. It's a Richard Garfield game. Okay. Filthy. It Richard. was made out of a binder of the nine card Ultra Pro pages, and so you would flip the pages and whatever showed up. Oh, I think I remember seeing. Was I like, think you showed me something on that. Yeah. I, I've never actually played it. That's it was pretty good game. It was, yeah, it was, it was kind of a like game. Your, you're looking down a street and you're seeing buildings in front of each other or billboards rather. And yeah, so then you have a billboard that blocks something, you know, so now you're going to get the business that someone else would have gotten before. Had the law office of Dewey, Dewey Cheatham and how <laughs> that was one of the, it, okay. it was a three panel. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Anyway, that game went away, <laughs> but I think it came back recently. I don't, am I wrong? Uh, that, that has not come back. Nothing ever dies in the game industry. I mean, come on. The it, it some, uh, what were you thinking? Was also yeah, but, yeah. from them, and that is, Calliope has done Beehive, which is ah, right. pretty much the same thing from Richard Garfield with you know that party game. Did uh, they do like a handful of like uh, fifty-two card deck games? Yeah, fifty card pickup. They did. Great Bell movie. Yeah, Great Bell movie. Yeah, main thing. Uh, then they had, yes, a couple of small things. There was a word game where you're smacking stuff, and I don't remember. What was the one that he did? Or maybe it wasn't him. It was the, uh, oh, it was a weird one. I'm pretty sure it was Wizards. Hmm. Maybe we can speculate on who would buy um, As Asmodee As for Day. one point. Five billion dollars, fifteen hundred million. I can't even imagine. We were talking about Disney. I, I don't see them buying Disney. That. I, I, more likely they'd buy Hasbro. I got one thing. So this is a peripheral point. I found the actual correct pronunciation is Asmodee. Yeah, they still kept that accent. It's not Asmodee. They got rid of the Go accent. Back and forth in case one is wrong and one is right. They got rid of the accent, but they kept the French yeah. pronunciation. I verified that with them because uh, some question that came up. So. Oh, I know. God, someone <laughs> got the answer right. I mean, there was like 15 posts about it. I, I going back and forth. I, I, have no I said Asmodee on purpose because you said Asmodee. Like, <laughs> because it was this Get argument. It. Contrarian. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, wait, who else? Disney. That's right. Amazon. Amazon, we need. Amazon, and Walmart. No, well, you never know. Target. Why now? Can Target drop one point five billion coins? I doubt it. Uh, I mean, they probably could on the right property, but I don't. It seems it's, they don't keep stuff on the shelf. But they don't have to. I mean, something like yeah, other people buy it. Would that make sense for Target? Target already carries Catan and Pandemic. They have their own yeah. ticket to ride. They have their own unique ticket to ride. And seriously, if you are going to buy yeah, that, New York. yes, you're gonna you're gonna drop two 
two thirds of the titles that are dealing small numbers and you're going to make up most of your money with whatever is left, which they would be selling and they don't want if they want to do that. Right. Um, what about Hasbro? It could be another company like them too. You know what I mean? Like the Hasbro? No, like, uh, your, what is it? The name of your, 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 and then else who think uh, on that they, one. they wouldn't be paying up such a premium. I don't know. Right, those companies. I think the mission statement of Eurasio is to buy companies, make them more buy profitable, low, sell and high. Sell them. Yeah, Do and then that game? wash your hands of it and don't have to do any more of the dirty work on there. Yeah, they. I like reading their um, annual reports because they have Desi Ghoul is in there. <laughs> Do you know how to pronounce Desi Ghoul? Does it yule or does it yule? Anyway, whatever, being silly. Uh, Amazon yeah, says, I think it makes the most sense because Amazon has plenty of warehouse space. They can carry everything. They can sell it all. But wouldn't that be a big fu to the to the brick and mortar stores? Yeah, it would. All the tactics that Asthma Day has been in for in, in creating and enacting is primarily to help FLGSs and the pers that kind of situation. Yes. Selling to Amazon. Wow. Okay. Would be well, interesting. It, it, the point though is if they actually do want to sell, what do they care anymore? They just want their money. That's, you're, you're, uh, Eric, you're such a capitalist pig. I'm just saying that That's if they exactly are exactly what a capitalist pig would say. If they are they done care with for what happens, done. then they just feel like, yes, we were totally invested in in the friendly local game stores, and hopefully the next owner will be too. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that they would care. They, so if they get their a million, a billion and a half dollars, they'll be ecstatic, right? Yeah. I mean, that was the rumored valuation. I don't know if that would actually be of the course. sale. Hey, did we do a sound check with ourselves? Yes. Are we okay? There's somebody asking, saying that there might be a delay. I don't know how you resolve that. It's like a one second delay, which I did not notice when we were first checking it. Oh, yeah. You're nervous you now, though? Extend your words a lot so that when you start uh, and finish and you're still saying it. No. Uh, so Steph says you, you need to play shorter games. We did play shorter games. Steph Hodge. Uh, we played face cards, which was great. We played drop it drop it which, which is, is great. really great and we played i uh made nikki and uh, aldi play the copy of merchants that i brought for aldi and that game is great isn't it, it nikki is was surprised very cool and not a lot of stuff you know not a lot of choices but there's actually depth and you're kind of like blunt faking out whether you're gonna you know these guys you had four ships right yes I nikki had, had three ships, and i yeah. had two um I ended up winning by eight points or nine, ten. ten, okay, or maybe eleven. I think that's what the deal was. I had oh, not... it was more than the cost of the yeah, ship. Yeah, more than the cost of the ship. But I did buy the additional cards upgrade. What's the name of that game? Merchants. Merchants by Reiner Knizia. Reiner Knizia, yeah. Was it was published in America under a... uh, Catalyst Labs? Catalyst Labs. Yeah, and I don't. But know what I happened. never remember it coming that, out. That was the box within a box within a box game. You kept opening it up and there'd be another box. Then you open it up again and then there's another box because it's just cards and, you know, it's a very small game. So I it's saw it, Ken Shota had it. It was like this big, uh, this, the first box. Then he opened it up and then he, it was the next box. But that was Tom Basil that said it was the box within the box within the box. <laughs> yeah, it totally no was that. that. <laughs> um, but it's great. And the Japanese version is really cool. Uh, you don't need any, I mean, the rules are very simple and the rules are on BGG and somebody actually has pasted up you know, English with all the graphics from the Pegasus Spiel one. Um, I believe the art in the uh, Catalyst Labs one was different. And, yes, um, and there's a Chinese version as well. But Eric didn't know it either. Yeah, totally went under my radar. I love Kinesia, and yet you cannot off his games. So. so the main point of the game is you're Thank shipping you. goods out of your hand. So you've got the cards in your hand that are goods, and you know what they are. Like, you, and they're five six colors yeah there's 10 cards of and each. there's 10 of each so you so six the cards um 
and you're like, okay, well, I played four blue cards, which are, you know, grapes or blueberries or whatever. And then you get $1 per ship that you map that matches that color. So if your ships don't have any blueberries, then you don't get any money. Blueberries. Indigo, but, probably. Um, indigo. So, but you can yeah, change you your ships. Six you can change them. That you can play into. Right. And you only, you only can ship up to six goods per turn. So. And you can, and you can piggyback ship as off as you ones that are so, already on the board. Yeah. And so you can also, yeah, you don't even have to have the goods. You can just say, I'm, I'm shipping lemons. You, you ship but one. If, you have to you ship it. Oh, you have to ship at least one card to do it. So you, you can, if you have, let's say there's multiple yellow cards in the array. If you play one yellow card, then it pays out for each one of them. And if you right. have more than one of those goods, because you can have one good in each ship, and let's say you have two yellow cubes in your ship, then you pay double for each card that's in the array. And then so some of the tactical thing is that you're covering up some of the cards because there's only six, and they never come back. So you're just covering them up, and you're determining, like, I bluffed on green. I actually drew a bunch too, but I was waiting to, so they would bail, bail out. And Scott dumped one cube and Nikki still had two. And I'm like, the game's over. I've got to play these now. So um, right. I think I paid 12 or 10. It's a little hard like to that. comprehend the way we're saying it. Yes. It's, it's, very it's abstract, cool. of course. It's an abstract ish thing, but it is very really cool. cool. And you can buy some upgrades and stuff. Um, I bought four ships. Lincoln bought Zero. something that lets him one draw card. extra cards. Nobody bought the extra contract to give you extra money. Which or the extra, extra, did you buy the one ex, yeah. extra exchange? Or the... Yeah, so there's some technology in the game. Pretty cool game. Uh, I had never heard of it, which was kind shocking. Of surprising. Yeah. And so we played that, and it was great. What were you going to say, Eric? Uh, it's a stock game. That's, yes. Yeah. You're just holding stocks and hope to pay out. And when you hold the stocks, then you. Hey, Rodney's here. Hey, Rodney. Good. Other stock and looking forward to seeing you at, at BGG Con Spring. Wait, is Rodney going to be there? Yes, yeah. Oh. When I was running down the guest list. I was running the guest list of BGG Con Spring. <laughs> Rodney Smith, Chaz there. Marler, Steph Hodge, Eric Martin, Lincoln Dammer, Scott Alden, and Nikki Pontius, um, Rusty. Yeah, Rusty's What's coming. Howard? Which is great. I didn't know until um, last week. We already started filming the SDJ titles for the. So our season ended um, with uh, Micropolis, and six is going to start at the beginning of June. It looks like it's going to start with the Kinderspiel nominations because we don't have a lot of time before that. It actually, the announcement of the winner is the 11th, and we get back on the 29th or 30th, I think, from here. So we just and we still have to fill two more kids games. So um, we were fortunate to have Panic mansion already or shaky manner panic manner panic, panic, panic shaky manor. Shaky manor. Um, mansion. yeah is it panic manner or panic mansion panic mansion and shaky yeah. manner that one that one is great that one was su surprisingly good and i already know that i love the dragon's breath one um i forgot when we talked about uh what we thought might get nominated i completely forgot about that game and i think it is really great um i don't know anything about it and then we have here the uh, an overview when we are. Yes, yeah. And but, you know, the Haba demo is like it's a minute and a half usually, and you're just like, oh, here's the cool thing, and here's how it works. Done. I know. But I you just didn't stick. I even I told Nikki about it, and we looked at the video when she was editing, and I completely forgot about it when we were thinking because yeah. you know we don't. I didn't get a copy, and I didn't. I didn't really want any copies of games because I had no storage. Or actually, no more weight in my bags that I could carry, um, and I uh, I did take a copy of Iquazu because we were we already filmed it, but it hasn't come out yet. Um, but I really wanted to do that. We really like that game. And then uh, Drop It, which is fantastic. Jr. was saying that they weren't scoring anything when they played, and we we're like, "What are you doing?" Nikki scored like seventy five points. Nikki. Yeah, she creamed us. <laughs> she creamed us. I was the one scoring zero. Nikki scored Oh my gosh, 75. Scott had three turns in a row or something like yeah, that. It was, it was it zero was, points. It was and, and unexpectedly, like it, I was it looks very like careful. really positive and a big and zero. it would just like split it would split the pieces and it would dive down in and touch it something touched the same and color touch. the same shape. Yeah. Awesome. Neat game though. I like it. Have you played that one, Eric? I have not. We only besides, did no. besides it, Nuremberg. Yeah, we filmed the demo and that was it. It looks neat. Yeah. I, I want the giant one that they had at, uh, at Nuremberg. That seems to function very differently just because of the weight of 
pieces. Mm-hmm. They were very big pieces. Yeah. Um, but it was slick. Let's see what else is. Yeah. Uh, was that a nominate? That was a nominated, I believe, right? Drop it. I don't even think it was recommended. Oh, recommended. I don't even mm-hmm. think it was recommended. No. I think I looked it up. It's not mm-hmm. recommended. Okay. I'm shocked. Maybe didn't catch their eye. Giant drop it. It's so good. it is cool. It's really neat. I wish I could get it somehow. I still want the giant uh, super rhino hero. The one we have one in the mm. library, but I wish they. I was looking like dreaming that they uh, had it again in Japan, which I know they don't. But no, they... I went to I think six game stores or seven. Oh, I wish you'd asked about it. I could have told you there is only one store that has it. And that's the the Gorokoya because they carry Haba titles and they had a special deal to make it. Right. And they were but the I only think that they only apparently that license is now up. Because I remember talking with them about it. Because we were trying to get it to see if we could sell it through our store. But the right. point is that Haba doesn't want to make that available in the US because uh they I don't know, I guess consider it could be hazardous. With U.S. Oh, wow. laws in terms of, you know, a child's toy that encourages them to climb on things and have stuff fall on them. Yeah, so, the giant Azul. Somebody's mentioning that Kabuki kid. That's that's coming. Five hundred copies, right? Three hundred. I think it's no, five hundred. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> yes, five hundred copies for three hundred dollars each. Uh, it's amazing. My only gripe is that it should be thicker tiles, but they're still fantastic because it's oh, exactly yeah, the same it. thick. Yeah, it's it's massive. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, they're I like, still want the tiles to be twice as thick. They're just like huge coasters. <laughs> he throw it at somebody. What aren't they worried about that being dangerous? What Azul? Yeah, the giant Azul. Any yeah. game can be dangerous if you throw it at someone's head. That sounds like an event at BGG Spring. At BGG Spring. No. <laughs> well. We do have the giant rhino, super giant rhino hero. That, and the, I've seen kids build it Jumping and then they on just it. run through it. Yeah. They'll just run through the thing. They have no respect for oh the giant God. rhino hero. <laughs> and I don't want to be the bad guy and say, kids, don't do that. Quit having fun. Quit having fun. But I'm not that guy. That's right. They'll get scared in their parents. Cardboard. I told you. Just cardboard. That's it. Yeah. So what else got nominated? Which game are you pulling for, Eric? Which one do you think saying win? Legacy Giant Azul? So you're going to grout the tiles in. That's good. I, I, a successful Japanese game in the BGD store. Do we know that? Wait, what? What has been the most successful Japanese game in the BGD store? I know the answer. Deep Sea Adventure. Any guesses? Guess? Do you guys have any guesses? Deep Sea Adventure. That's Deep Sea Adventure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that game is just pure awesome. When are we getting a giant one? It'll be in a shoe box, not a perfume box. So that'll be the new series of Oink Games, shoebox games. I'm waiting for them. They've we already have a the giant se- uh, deep sea adventure yeah, with con. That's so right. Yeah, we had the version on, that you could play on the floor. Yeah, with the foam dice and mm-hmm. the big tiles. It's yeah. cool. I just closed the chat because I'm clumsy. Oh. So, um, which 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 game did you? Uh, we're, we're surprised to see nominated. Oh, nomination? Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luxor, I mean, we, we knew Azul in the mind. Like, we just kept saying it was those two. And well, Lu- I, I, suge- I suggested that uh, you did. Luxor and potentially Pioneers could get nominated. Never considered it because I, I thought it looked really ugly. Just... It is not beautiful. I will absolutely admit to that. The, the best looking pieces on the board are the sarcophaguses, but the game is really good. The downer is it feels like for me, one of the expansions was missing. Like it should be part of the game. Secret Missions feels like it should be part of the game. Um, we already played it for the uh, SDJ coverage and it's very good. It's Rudiger Dorn. I mean, the guy knows how to make games, um, but it's just not, it's subtle. The colors are, there's not a lot of contrast. It's kind of a drag. The deluxe version that's coming from the Kickstarter is gonna have a bunch of wooden pieces and those are nice. So you'll have stickers to put on the wooden pieces and those look good. Um, the only ones that I really care about were the sarcophaguses for that because the keys, you stack them up as you go through and you have these giant stack of keys maybe. Although it's it turns out it's hard to get in there. Um, and then I think they're gonna have a wooden start player with stickers. 
and maybe the scarabs are going to be in stickers um but it's it's a really cool game it deserves the nomination i i'm not you know i'm torn i love the mind i feel that's the one that should win um and i think azul is fantastic so you know it's really it's because as soon as we played Rizul, oh, this is going to win. This yeah, is it. Like, oh, yeah. And then, then we played the Mine. We're like, well, oh, I my God, this about, is amazing. This yeah, is it. Yeah, I've thought that about other games. Though. Like, of course. We always feel there's something. But uh, what was most surprising for me was Wolfgang Varsh getting nominated for three and Michael Kiesling getting nominated for two. That was – I was literally stunned when I saw Ganshon Clever. I also s suggested that uh, Quacksalber von Quidlinburg could be nominated. So that was exciting that it got nominated. I can't wait to but play it. But none of us have played it. So yeah, because it's, it's German. Came out of nowhere. Entirely yeah. German. There's a cards full of German. So usually the jury comes with, I guess John's doing the pace ups is what we've got. Yeah, we're out. pasting up three copies for playing. Yeah. By the way, the Spiel des Jahres judges committee. Four are, of them. Four of them are coming to BGGCon Spring. So it's at least. And they're on hand to teach all of those nine games. Yep. Ten. Oh yeah, that's right. Because we're pandemic, have pandemic legacy, legacy season, season two. two set up to play, uh, at least the first month. So that's a lot of. Hey, Govin's on. Hey, Govin, happy you're here. I have to respond to your email. <laughs> I've been here since I got it. I met Govin and his friends in uh, Japan. I actually mentioned last week. Oh yeah, St uh, Stephen and. Ozon? Oof, I'm glad I remembered that. It's hard. His name's not what I would think it would be. He's a really, really nice guy. They were all really nice. And uh, I was I just could not get his name in my head. But hey, I'm remembering it now. Um, they were really nice. Eric was very tired when we went to dinner with them. He was at the end of the table, like batteries going down. Then he finally ate and was like awake. It was great. So I finally played Quacksalver. And there. I played twice now. Oh, what do you I think? Hope I will be playing a lot more, and I have to play Heaven and Ale and Luxor. It's interesting because it is very much, it's a completely different game, and yet the the way it plays out feels very much like The Mind and Gunshun Clover, in that there is a wide range of possibilities for what can happen to you. Like in The Mind, you can just lose in the second level and be done or you can continue all the way to the end. And in Ganshon Clever, you can just get terrible dice rolls and you don't X off anything, and you don't get the combos and you, your score is terrible. Or you just ping pong all over the place and you just do awesome. And this does the same thing because it's a bag building game and you start, everyone starts with the same stuff in their bag. Too, right? And you're pulling stuff out simultaneously and putting it into your pot because you're brewing potions and if you pull out too much of this one type of thing, then your pot explodes and you don't get certain bonuses and you only get points or money on the turn instead of both. Whereas if you don't explode, you get points and money and maybe you get bonuses and you get to use these special things and you're buying more chips to put in your bag to get special effects as you pull them out or once they're on your board. And your board resets every single round. So you're doing this nine rounds and it had some rounds where it'd be like four chips, boom, you blew up and you're done. And you're just like, it was the worst thing possible. And I think I drew like 15 chips, you know, on my, my round against my opponent. And so I had this massive turn where he had nothing. And it, so it has these wild swings of what you're doing. And yet in both games, one person was in the lead the entire time. And then the final round, the other person went ahead and won. So I, it's so it, it has that sort of family-friendly feel and that you're going to have these wild turns and, you know, kids can come from behind and kids can do crazy things and they'll succeed in spite of themselves. So it's kind of, it's a family game with that level and yet it's complex enough that, yeah, it's not going to be a spiel nominee because you have to know, here's what these five things do that you would want to buy. And then the next round you get one more new thing and the next round you get one more new thing. So it's a lot to just absorb all at once for what you're doing. But then the gameplay itself flows once you get past that, that hump. So I will be happy to teach it well, to whoever because I want to play it a bunch. So I think that I was, we played um, Ganshin and Clever for uh, Game Night as well. And when Dave was explaining the game, I'm like, yeah, this really is a Kenner. 
it's more comp it's not a hard game but it's more complicated than you think um there's things that you could get wrong even when you've played it a bunch of times you think oh i could take that six over and over again you're yeah, like you think no you cannot take that six, take that six. Well, you, you take that six you're in trouble yeah you wipe your turn out it's uh it's really great game it's He's having an amazing year, and so is Michael Kiesling, because I've not played Heaven and Nail. That'll be one of the four games I have to play. Actually, I kind of need to play Pandemic, although I am not. I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to save it for game night in hopes that we can shoot it. Because right. we, we only have four nominated games to cover. We've already done five, two of which have already been episodes, The Mind and um, Azul. But, uh, but we want to cover... Um, Pandemic Legacy Season 2, just because it's one and it deserves it. It's very, I'm really glad they decided to give that game uh, the award. Yeah. It's been nominated, so you know, the, the Pandemic System has been nominated so many times and has not won, and it really does deserve it. It's so great. And I want to ask uh, Tom Felber. He said, in the translation, it said, my eighth and final list has hmm. a special award on it. So is he done? Being, oh yeah, I want to know. I would like to, we get to yeah, talk that to was, on Friday. Could have been translation error, or it could have been no, because they had an English version that they published, and it says that same thing. But I think it it was him leading the jury. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know that he's out of the jury, but it's too bad because he's been really great for the jury. I think um, he's progressive, and I think I think the award needs to be progressive. Um, doesn't mean they always select the most progressive title to win, but they definitely have nominated some amazing games. Um, I don't, this year is going to be tough. I mean, I have a, definitely a hard time calling the Kenner. Uh, wow. But once I've played well, it's play. Heaven and Nail. Yeah. Well, I've what? Played Heaven and Nail. J uh, Eric? What? No. I think I've it's well. Heaven and Nail either. So. Yeah, I, yeah. That's. I've played. I'll, we'll play I'll it with you. Everyone just says, ah, it's too complicated. It won't win. So. It's not that complicated. I don't know. There's just that one rule. There's that one rule that's a little wrong. confusing because of the terminology. So it's just a, probably a bad translation to English. Um, it, yeah, I hope, terminology. I hope Tom's not done with the jury. I actually hope he still runs it, but I can understand. I don't even know if there's limits or anything. I know nothing about it. Um, but he's been really, really out talking up the award. He's had that great discussion uh, three or four years ago at BGG Con. Yep. Um, Still on our channel. It's a great, it. it's a great clearing up of what the award is about. Because so many people have, I was reading the nomination. I don't know why I read it because people get really worked up about my kids can play Terraforming Mars and that's great, but not every kid can play Terraforming Mars. I mean, if you're from a gamer family, you're, able to play those things you can wrap your brains around it i think i think with as i said with quacks uh salver von quillenberg based on eric's uh mention of it and dancer and clever those are complicated to a degree and i'm sure heaven and ales oh, yeah. relatively complicated oh, yeah. i mean heaven and has got complex people want the heavy games to get nominated yeah, they and it clearly isn't going to happen that's the bgg awards golden geek awards and the dsp right dsp yeah Mm -hmm. That's a, I'm still surprised to see those in public. I was in Barnes and Noble today, and on the shelf they have Seafall and First Martians, and I forget what else they had. I'm just like, holy cow! This is just. I hope it's not setting people up for a, a bad experience where they just think, oh, I got something fun to play this evening, and then you open it and you're just like, this rule book goes on forever. Well, well that's kind of what happened with. Um... Dominion, right? Like you were saying, everybody ha you had to have a know the rule for each of these cards, and it, and it over overly complicated things, and it yeah. kind of led to the Kenner being established. Yes, because the basics of Dominion are super simple, but then I have to remember these other ten things and teach them before we, you can even start. And so it's yeah, it's that that hump to get over initially that you know people have to sit for. Chris Schreiber asks if the jury members are fun, playful. I don't know about they're playful, but they're definitely fun. Oh, they're super fun. Tom is a Tom is a very funny guy, but he's very dry. Um, Martin is great. Uh, Chris Mebus is going to be there this time, and he, he was not here last year. He's great. And Stefan Golish, Golish, Gro Golish. He's going to be there. He's a children's jury member. He's great. Um, 
they're all great i mean they and they're great teachers yes like the teaching is amazing and then they are tired you know, even they the do children's jury people know yeah. the games yeah they know all, everyone knows all the games um follow up do jury members already know the winner at bg spring can you tell their favorites we do they do not know the winner and they are very very close to the vest nobody I've once never. in a while somebody will say something that will give you an indication of where their mind is at but they do not they don't yeah. mention favorites they don't talk about they're just there to promote the games that are nominated and then once those are nominated they'll be at like gen con promoting the winners and that's what's important for, for them and that's the right way to do it for sure and no tom, favoritism is tom filbers talked about that too in his talk at bgg con when he said once we have the nominations then he's going to play each of the nominated games usually 50 to 70 times after that. And that's also with teaching, watching other people learn without him doing it. Also, they watch pretty closely, actually, at BGGCon. Yeah, see how they that's expect that. And that's a big part of it is this intense period. If they're going to expect that hundreds of thousands of people are going to play this game, they want to really make sure they make the right choice. So once they get their nominees... Well, they play them a lot. That's why the rules. That was both jur, uh, heads of the jury mentioned rules book rule book problems, and that's exactly my feeling about a lot of this stuff. There's been so many weird little things where if if they truly play tested the rules, um, blind tested them as the rule book appears, they would catch so many of these things, and they really need to do that. Uh, yeah. It's really odd. Uh, somebody it's asked because it's that's such an easy thing to do. I understand, but like I think just I think it runs. People, they run out of time. It's that's just they always are running out of time because everybody, every publisher, only one publisher, which I won't mention, that I know of, is aggressively trying to be ahead of the schedule by a bit, by quite a bit. Um, I don't know. Of, I'm sure others are trying, but it you know you run into production issues and all kinds of stuff. Um, somebody said. <laughs> I can't watch all these game videos. My Dubai list gets just out of hand. It's true. Um, do the, behind me. Do the SDJ mer jury members also seem to like games outside of their usual judging range? Well, I know for sure that Stefan Grolish loves, he would like to get out of the children's jury. Um, like I think his kids have grown, grown up, up, you know, and so he doesn't, it's, the reason is probably because it's more work for him to play the kids' games. He has to engage in community stuff probably to make that happen. I know that Christoph, uh, Shulinski is very engaged and loves to go out to schools and play the games and see what the reaction is. Because as adults, we develop favorites to these for these things and stuff like that. And it's that's not really necessarily what kids are going to enjoy. So they really need to see children playing the games. And I know Tom has hundreds of events yeah. to, to play the games before the nomination. And then they continue to do stuff until the prizes are announced. So there's a lot of dedication for a job that does not pay for that. They don't pay at all. All they get is expenses covered for doing things like going to events and stuff. So it's uh, the only people that get paid are people that are employed to help manage and run the award. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we met uh, Guido, who is the CEO of the jury last year, mm -hmm. and he's a great guy. He used to be on the jury, one of the younger members, and now he helps run the uh run the office so it's and it's great i was teasing him we're we we're waiting for the awards uh to be announced the nominees and uh i was teasing chris i'm uh, christoph i'm like hey man we're waiting one of these things coming right because he's like by like an hour guido's having some problems and i think it was a uh, tabulation thing oh. and um so guido wrote me afterwards and said that he had uh run into a little bit but it, they're very proud of the list and i think that they have a right to be it's a very very amazing list all the way around even the recommended are i mean as we say almost every year lately they are lots of great games are getting recognized and it's weird so this is the only ones that i didn't know about was emo, emo, emoji Ito. emojito emojito that's the only one i didn't know about every we other one i at least heard about them we had filmed an overview of Imojito, uh, me and John. At Nuremberg? At Nuremberg. At Nuremberg? Oh, okay, John. Okay. 16, I believe. 2016? And, yeah, I think it was 2016. Uh, I'm trying to remember, because I can kind of remember Michael demonstrating the game. And, 
and, and showing it off. And then they had it, I think, at that spiel only from Decilis, which is a Greek company. And then Hook picked it up after that. So. Is who does that? Is that blue orange then? What? Emojito? No, it's it's yeah. hook. Emojito. Oh, it's hard not to say mojito, isn't it? Uh, yeah, mojito. I, which one was blue orange? Oh, it's Panic uh, Manor yeah. or Shaky Manor. Um, yes, which twenty. Is really cool. I remember. I'm not too old okay, yet. Okay, 2016. It's still in the database. <laughs> Your mind is still there. My mind is still there. I knew that. If the, I'm not paying attention. Yeah. See if there's any more questions on the chat. Sorry but, for the late start. We had technical problems. Um, I mean, as usual. It, yeah, we played. I mean, last May we played Terraforming Mars with Christoph and uh, Guido. Stuff. We Guido were Martin. kids' jury members, but we we're playing Terraforming Mars. Was and it Guido? Not voting on that, but they're playing it with us. So, yeah, they have. Yeah. A, they know the games. Uh, Christo taught us that game, right? Yeah. Thanks. I know that Christo plays deep games. He was he just finished Seventh Continent with some friends of ours. Mm -hmm. um, Thirty hours of play, or not finished, but got the first curse. Yeah, the first curse, yeah. I guess. <laughs> right, it just got us. And then they played. What was the other game that they? Oh, they played Quacksalver. D. Quacksalver von Quillenberg, um, which I cannot wait to play. I'm excited that yeah, you've already played it, Eric. D. I'll teach you. Paste it up. We won't teach the rules wrong at all all weekend, right? I would hope not. I, I, I have an English translation of the rules from Schmidt, so hopefully cool. as long as I can... Cards, how did, did you just look and translate them as you got them? What? Oh, did the you cards? translate the cards as you got them? Yeah. I have a, I have a file with the translated cards, too. Okay. Sometimes when you deal with editors directly, they will give you rules for things. I'm just, I'm just perk of the job. Yeah, a little bit. Who does Santorini in Five Minute Dungeon in Germany? Chad, you can look that up on the internet. Come on. Actually, it might not say there's probably too many publishers. Five Minute it does Dungeon. Say, but you gotta... Five Minute Dungeon, I thought was. It should be on the list. They usually say who it's from, don't they? Yeah, but you got to go look it up. I think it's Cosmos. I mean, look, Five Minute Dungeon, Cosmos. Yes, Santorini. Play Five Minute Dungeon. Have have right there. There. No, you uh, gave it to me. There. Spin Master. I was one deck dungeon. Well, I didn't realize one deck. I had a German branch, but five minute dungeon's different. Okay. Plays in five minutes, I assume. Have you played Five Minute Dungeon? I have not. Drop it is out in Germany because it's a Cosmos game. Or yeah, yeah Cosmos. Cosmos. I don't know why it didn't get nominated. Um, you know that they could get nominated next year. That's yeah, the, the games are there's like a two year range. Um, and maybe af once they see what they've got, or maybe not enough people. I am sure people played it. Maybe it was uh, Ken or uh, SDJ. I don't know. Maybe they didn't feel it was a children's game. Maybe it's, it's a little compl complex for children's game. I, I would have to. I have not played it. I've only watched it, so I don't really know. I mean, I was thinking about that, so I was playing Illusion, which just continue the Wolfgang Warsh thing. Gosh, if that was nominated too, which I love, Illusion. it should have been. It's oh, probably, awesome. it could be. A, it could be a nomination. But the the but, variation from game to game with this is not going to be very much. Like it feels like right. it's kind of the same, and I'm not going to play this six times in a row, probably. Or except if you're me. Except for Scott. Okay. <laughs> I played it a bunch. That's right. But Germany is not full of Scots. Or Steph Hodge. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it, it feels like it ha it's less variable than Ganshin Clever or, or even the mind, like in terms of the experience that you have or Azul feels like the games develop yeah, differently. Whereas Illusion, just you're going, you're either calling or not and putting the card in order. So. That makes it sound a little under, but yeah, I, I well, get it. It's really good for what it is, but it's also like a 15 minute game. I don't know. I'm not going to set people on fire, which is good. That's a qualification for being nominated. You do not set people on fire. <laughs> the, the, somebody said to that we. Uh, uh, 
was a, a lot of things have happened. Uh, in SDJ nominated games, more more about the mechanics and how they are integrated, or and are the themes for most part irrelevant? I don't think that's the case at all. Um, they just want a interesting and enjoyable experience that it has a very clear rule book, so there's no question on how to play it. Um, and then it needs to be family friendly. Eric makes he's made plenty of cases about why certain games wouldn't be a, a SDJ in dealing with his mother and mother-in-law. You know, they just well, no, it's yeah. not dealing. You understand what I'm saying? It's not. Test. It's not to say it's ex too. it's fun to play it with people, but if they can't wrap their brain around it uh, quickly, then it's clear that's what it is because they're not. The award isn't for gamers per se. I mean, we love the games that are nominated and I'll play any of those games anytime. It's just that there's many people that they'll play at family events or they'll play at Christmas when they get the game. And that's kind of the extent of it. Um, well, and they want a big award initial experience and that's ticket to ride is still my standard for like a spiel title because you can play you, you can learn the rules. You've got three things to learn. You draw cards, play cards, or draw tickets. And that's it. And that's all there is to it. And there's no special powers or anything. And you can play, and you will finish the game, and you will see all this stuff. And you might have done terribly, but you you have the game. Hey, Rusty. Like, Rusty's you it down, and now you take you out of illusion. And if you play with gamers, you get a very different experience than playing with casual family people who aren't uh, taking the, you know, Atlanta, what is it? The Atlanta Memphis line first turn to cut off that, that little choke point there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yep. Yeah. Once you know that you take it immediately, but initially it's just sort of random and you do this, that, and the other, and yet it works across that whole spectrum of too heavy to get to ride. Wow. So I'm reading the chat. Somebody, yeah, I know, I know. I'm an idiot. What? Somebody you, said, uh, Kabuki Kid said, Ticket to Ride is too heavy for uh, the, the boyfriend. <laughs> well, you should take it off him then. Don't crush him. <laughs> I don't think it's that heavy. Know, look, That's the, the uh, Azul. That's going to be the heavy one. That's it's right. Like Thor's hammer on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one. Do you guys have a tutorial video on beginning beginner posting tips for the BGG website? Oh, my first. We're working on that. Experiences were met with fairly abrasive responses instead of helpful ones. That's not fun. abrasive we responses. Are, we are working on some videos for that stuff. We yeah, have. we're working on some how-to videos. We hope to have done well. You know, we're always redesigning the website. Yanny. And so, once that's always underway we can record some videos of how to use the website because you don't want to use the website before we redesign it right chicken before the egg thing. egg yeah cart, cart horse before the cart uh -huh. if you do come across someone who's abrasive just report the post there's a little red x button click it and say rude we we handle this stuff we we take it seriously we want new people to come in and feel friend feel safe and being able to engage into the website. That's, there that's should the be a goal. video or something that tells people to do that. Yeah, probably so. And if you're having an issue with an admin, you can come to me as well, or to Scott. If sure. we, we have a lot of helpers who handle some of the submission cues and correction cues and this and that and the other. And generally we have standards for how to do things. If you're new to the site, things might not be clear. And definitely if you, maybe you did not read the long submission guide for how to submit. Uh, new game listings, uh, which I, I contributed to by writing a super long guide. It is super long. I admit that. Yeah. Covering, it's co long, but it's, but it's thorough. Yeah. I'm trying to cover every circumstance, but the problem is, is you, you can also have your, your eyes glaze over while trying to do that. And so ideally we're trying to represent games fairly in the database. And completely, if you are able to submit complete listings. And so if, when we get incomplete listings, often we send them back to persons, people and say, hey, can you add more detail? It's that and the other. And uh, try to be thorough. Because sometimes when the listings. Questions on here? Not the game. 
So. What were you saying? Is there any more questions on the chat? Somebody's asking, uh, what's the next gaming trip? Trend? Oh, oh, gosh, if I could forget that, I would be rich. Well, in New York, Toy Fair is blindfolded. Rolling right. Nikki says rolling right. Rolling right. Well, that's what they're saying in the chat rooms for sure. It is pretty popular, and there's some great stuff. The one that is not a roll and write, but it's a flip a card and write the uh, welcome to your perfect home. That one is really cool. Um, and it's abs it's built like most of those types of games to be. And let's uh, make a bus route that we just filmed in Tokyo. There's also a flip and write. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you bringing Metro X? Yes. I have a bunch of Japanese. Yeah. I'm the encyclopedist, which I think I remember how to play. What, what did he just say? The encyclopedist? <laughs> 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 right are you bringing that game where you, did they give you a copy of the game where you have to make the card stand like in a oh, yeah. tent right? you, you got, yeah. i did not pick up did yeah. you see the video for that I did. isn't that great it's pretty cool and he's great it's like the when he does it the final time he does his pulls out like three cards throws the shows the cards it was great of course he designed the game well he pulled 20 cards off the in first, the first one yeah Yes. At the end, he did. But that's dangerous, right? Because you're like pulling a, a bunch of cards you can't use. Because you can see inside the cards. Sure. So if you can but maneuver in there. Like, so the deal is, is you have they have a piece of felt and you tent the cards, and you can take as many cards as you want out of there, but you have to leave the tent still standing when you right. pull the cards out, and it is a really neat mechanism. Uh, that guy was my favorite guest. I mean, there was everybody was mm -hmm. really, really great for showing up and dealing with the language barrier that we had. We had some translators that were super helpful, but he was hilarious because he gave Eric, Eric messed up his name. Like Eric knew it, but still said it wrong. He, he was frustrated and, and he yelled out his name and it was just, he was so much fun. You could see him shouting. Well, he was dressed up in a cloak too, so. Yeah, it was That's awesome. Fun. That's true. But yeah, I, there were a lot of, there were a number of publishers that seemed interested in Hectorian, so. I know. It looked it looked cool. It could easily get picked up. It's a cool system as well that you can see people using for other things. Other reasons. Yeah, dexterity and they somebody's resource management, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kathy, uh she asked if we we're gonna play I'm sorry, if they're gonna play any longer games on Game Night. We absolutely will we I'm have some three and a half <laughs> we have some one that we wanted to be the final episode of the season, but just the timing did not work out because of, uh, we came here actually early, which is good because there's a lot to do here. Um, and then where I was just in Japan and only got back a, two weeks ago now, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, we had a bunch yeah. to do before that. To edit that one episode. Maybe it'll be the season opener. Oh yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice. Well, no, it won't be. That's what I was saying. It's probably gonna be the Kinderspiels oh, right. because of the timing. Yeah. So it'll be one of the ones that that's the, th once we get into the Kinderspiel, uh, the SDJs, it's basically two months of SDJs. So it, we're not going to probably have, only thing I could say that will probably get edited is we'll finally get the cursed episode of Castell done. Castell. It is, it is a cursed game. Cursed it game. is unbelievable it's how many game, issues we've the, had. The, episode the game is cursed. awesome, but holy It joins the, the, the ranks of our cursed episodes. We have a up. few. There's three times. Yeah. Three times. Not three, it will be three times? No. Are you going to do it again? Castell's two. Two. What? Twice. Twice. Off so, camera, Nikki. Yeah, Nikki's over here. Uh, we did, I can't name the other games. Um, and they're great games. They're games we absolutely love and have had nothing but problems. And it really is terrible. I think one people don't realize is for long games, the time to film them is like 2x the time, the running time. So like- We're making sure things are correct. The and Scott watches those with while yeah, we're filming. Yeah, I watch while they're filming, and I'm I'm interjecting. And he they, points out and, lots, and, of, and that like, slows things down, right? So you basically have to rewind a turn. Um, yeah, and it's good. I mean, it, he uh, says things for clarity, like ninety-five so percent of the time, it's clarity like to make sure people understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two-hour game takes four hours to shoot. That some yeah, I would say that's up about, to that's four. Fair. It yeah. can, if unless it's unless everybody really knows the, the game longest, I think we filmed a game was uh well no there's two of those seven hours well no there was um which one carnival, carnival zombie. zombie was long it wasn't the longest though it you was the first long episode yeah it's carnival right behind zombie. us 
Um, but uh, Arkham Horror Card Game was actually a long film. And like five I think we played hours. that more than once. I mean, we played like two things on that one, like an introductory one and another one, I believe. And then this war of mine <laughs> was going to be, hey, we'll do this one quickly before dinner. Quickly. And by the time we were done, nothing was open. So we all basically, everybody left. And I don't even know what Nikki and I did to eat. And I had to go to work the next day. So it was a... Uh, I think you guys started at like 5 p.m. and it ended at midnight. It was 11 something. Yeah, around midnight. It was over six hours. Um, but, you know, that one is a co-ops. Are, <laughs> as much as I love co-ops, co-ops are, are the super. worst because oh. Dave will constantly second guess after we've made a decision. We're like, okay, we're going to do this. And then he goes, are you sure we, you know, is that what we should be doing? And it's, that's great, but boy, is it hard. But I love the long episodes. I was actually very afraid of them. When we first did uh, Carnival Zombie, I thought people were going to be frustrated. It was three and a half hours long. And we had many people that were excited to see that. So we do have more. There's actually a few that we filmed already, um, hoping to get them out before they get too old. So this summer is going to be some editing. That I actually, my first this, this is my first six months with BGG full time. And I've been gone not truly so half of the months? time, but it feels yeah, like half of the crazy. time. And um, which is great though. We've well, it's four shows, right? We've expanded Nuremberg, our coverage. Gamma Trade Show. Nuremberg Can. Oh, Gamma yeah, Trade Nuremberg, Show. Can, Gamma Trade Show and Tokyo Game Market. Yep, that's four. This off. week's BGG Con. Next month is Origins, Origins and the BGG Cruise. Cruise. So I, I'm busy till the end of June, and yeah, then we have to figure out where to. I'm gonna get where, where we can film more stuff. Yes, we're where gonna have fit one. In? Uh, one month, sort of, till we go to G Gen Con, and then I get about a month and a half uh, before, or two months maybe before Essen, and then BGG Con. So it's like the year is over. I mean, I'm already in planning everything out. The year is basically over already, and it's May twenty second. Yeah, the year is pre-planned. So we have to figure out how to do stuff in between the times. It's challenging. We've been doing pretty good. This was. We we're going to try to do the episode and then edit it. And Scott's like, you're not going to have the time to do yeah, that. Yeah, how would so. we edit it? And we actually should do them live uh, every yeah. so often. Well, you threatened to do live streaming out of the studio. So that might be it. That's yeah, way right. less work. But I actually get covered. Less polished, <laughs> less polished, more raw. Raw. Might, you might hear an F-bomb or two. I don't think we're going to do that. Unless we frustrate somebody. <laughs> and that'd probably be me. All right, what time is it? Ten thirty-two. It's been an hour. In, in, in eleven thirty-two for Eric. Um, let's see. How is collaboration with Watch a Play going so far? Great. We've been working well together. <laughs> We're uh, well. It's been a little slow it's because May we 1st, basically and he's, he started on May first. It's now May obligations twenty second. Right? Yeah. So, uh, and you know, it, we're he's coming out to this to the convention, and we're gonna. Focus up a little bit and see how to do some more stuff together. I like how my answer is. I didn't know he was coming. Um, <laughs> well, that's because we all are. I we mean, you've you got a lot going on. I mean, here's the thing. There's a lot of other things going on too. The um, the website's getting a privacy policy update tomorrow. You probably have noticed you got a lot of um, emails lately about privacy and those laws uh, regulations coming out of the EU. So BGG is getting a complete revamp of that, and that has taken a lot of time and a lot of work. And it applies to everybody. It applies to everybody. Members. We're basically just going to put it across the board. Um, honestly, it's not much different than what we're currently doing, but it's just more spelled out in the regulations. Um, so look for that tomorrow. Woo! Um, okay. Um, what else? Is Cat Steph's like, ha, ha ha, the year is not over. Well, it feels like the year is over. Well, when you're when it you're is, planning, I mean, we I mean we've talked about I, I've talked about this at conventions. When I go to Origins or Gen Con or Spiel, like I am done with those games. I feel I have written about them enough and looked at them enough, and I'm just done. I don't care. And of course, they are brand new, just hitting the market, and I'm just I'm like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> what do you think the badge guy is referring to? Or your mom is over? That was when my mom came in and. Dropped f bombs after oh, yeah, being yeah, at this. Oh, I'm like, I yeah, missed the all starting. That, of, the Nikki's starting of the, she's like, of what's our, she doing? The starting of our um, tabletop live stream. day live stream. Yeah, basically. thankfully, I think it was there. Too quiet I don't think she knew 
the mic was this in thing it. started so it was she, pretty she was that's spicy. not exactly like my mom either but no. she was clearly frustrated <laughs> by something nikki and her just come back right yes yeah rusty was the one that was stunned he's like <laughs> we're live by the way yeah <laughs> i kept walking past her i'm like hey we're live hey we're live she was just on a tear i didn't even hear the f-bomb this is the rest of the stuff she was going on about she was definitely frustrated with something but hey she ran the uh, the tricaster for us so she's always helpful with that <laughs> We also do have a something coming with the website with the Watch You Played videos. Um, but like I said, we've been working on privacy. Yeah, privacy for the past is very important. Two months. A little hard to get things done when every Isn't single exciting? day is you get a new uh, privacy policy. Woohoo! Is is filled with the thoughts of privacy and data. Anyway, we'll be there. We'll get there. More more exciting stuff to come. Um, what else? Are we done? Anything Any need other to questions? Look forward to or let anybody about know about? Hmm. Trying to think. The think cruise is going to be fun. We've got videos up from Tokyo Game Market. We still yeah, have we're starting. The coverage is up. Coming. Second day is not done. Yeah, so we have two dozen more coming. You can come see us at Origins in A104. Oh, we'll I know what we can talk about. Yeah. Gen Con. Gen Con, Gen Con, Gen Con. We have uh, the Hot, Hot Games, Games room, room is probably almost sold out. I haven't checked it in a couple of days. But if you want tickets to that, you should buy them now because that uh, guarantees you a seat in the room. Right. We do the take generic generics, tickets, but yeah. we do not prioritize generic tickets over pre purchased tickets. So search for the BGG Hot Games room on the Gen Con events list. And our plan is to have every new game. Uh, multiple copies of every new game in that room to play and try before um, you buy them. And tied into that, we sell the tickets. Yeah, we sell the tickets in two hour blocks. Go ahead. Well, tied into that, uh, Monday when I get back from BGG Con, uh, I sent out my request form for information to publishers for Gen Con. And then we will start organizing the demo schedule for Gen Con, uh, verifying that they will get us games for the hot games room. Uh, all the publishers that I wrote to to schedule demos for Origins, some of them are bringing us games at Gen Con, and some of them are mailing them to us uh, for use in the library or at Gen Con if they're out in the time. So yes, the plan is to organize all this, and we are giving coverage to publishers, and in return we get games to put in the hot games room for you guys to try out. So that's that's the plan. And those games come back to BGG and get put directly into the library. For in November. For BGG Con. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of all plays together. Well, that's the great thing about the Hot Games Room is most of the bunch of the games that we have there are already sold out. So it's your only chance to even really yeah. play some of the games. Uh, certainly, you won't get your, be able to get your hands on them. It's one of the most frustrating things about the convention for me and is that it's kind of a soft release for a lot of games. And then the big release is at Essen. So they have a limited availability. Yeah. I and mean, not everyone, obviously, because there's many publishers that are launching full on at uh, at Gen Con. But um, it's just rough because they try to control it. They don't let people, like some publishers don't let the con people, they have to get in line with everybody else. to Industry to folks, industry yeah. doesn't get to jump ahead. Which is line. fair. I mean, I it's, it's the most painful thing about it. we have some friends that we only get to see at gen con and they are always struggling to get games and it's a real downer because you know they're very excited about it um this was before the uh hot games room has john this come to the hot games room since we've started it john. john schultz no yeah i mean he gets wrapped up they they do a lot of rpgs but um yeah but they should come <laughs> hey john if you're watching you should come that's right. Uh, it's the chance to actually play the games, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, lots of games, you know, the hot games are what people, the hot, hottest of the hot games. We usually set those up, permanently set up. Yeah. You got to look at the whole table, uh, the tables. There's a lot of great stuff there that you should be. Uh, and maybe look at Eric's uh, preview and see what you might want to try to play. That's a, certainly a good way to actually see what uh, might tickle your fancy. Right, mm -hmm. Eric? 
Yeah, we have, I forget how many titles I have on the preview list already. It's not live, but I'll start, it's a few dozen. Same thing with the spiel list. And I'll start requesting info on Monday and then I'll have six weeks. No, no, I'm totally thinking wrong. I will have three weeks because then it goes live once the day after Origins ends. And then we'll keep adding to it till early August when Gen Con opens. Right. Cool. So yeah, seven so weeks. About the Con, um, Maui Chris asked if this is the final year of DFW Hyatt, and that is correct for fall. The convention in the fall will move downtown to the Hyatt Regency Reunion Tower, which is that big ball skyline thing you've seen probably in pictures of downtown Dallas. And the hotel is right well, next to it. they have the VGG logo going around it? I wonder if we can do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I have any control over the over the, the you lighting. Get, can you hack of, it? Get Jeff on that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So fall will be the final year. This is the final year. No more pink lemonade for uh, Lance. Tepid pink lemon for laminate. Uh, and laminated. We'll be moving. We'll have pink, tepid yellow lemonade for Lance. How tall is Eric? He is definitely tall. I think he's six three or four. What do you what, what do you say, Eric? Four. Six four. He th he's like I'm only a little bit taller than you. I'm like I'm looking up at you, and I'm six feet two. <laughs> it's six four and then some extra, but you know. Okay, you, so there you go. Doesn't really matter at a certain point. It's not six five. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> well, don't worry. Six, you're five, just, you're just gonna get down. shorter for the rest of your life. I know. I remember my parents talking about that all the time, where where they would do that. Except they they shrunk at the same rate, so my mom could still fit exactly like. You know her head under my dad's nose, and then would like get. <laughs> so this is how it's gonna happen. That's what, we, that's what we got to look forward to. Yay! That's right. I'm gonna shrink them. Uh, spring conventions does stay at the DFW Hyatt, so we're there for the foreseeable future. We got some room to grow there. I think we're at 1,600 attendees this year. 16. Did you have like 100 people want to get tickets? After yeah, there's the a whole bunch of people that wanted to get tickets, and unfortunately, they sold out. And so. they just closed this the sales a week and a half yeah. ago, right? Yeah. So, got to jump in there early. Yeah, got to act a little quicker. That's it. Eric is tall enough to spot him in the Shibuya Scramble Crossing. That is true. We uh, Ken found us. <laughs> The last day we were in town, uh, that Eric, oh no, Eric, Kevin, Eric wasn't there. It was the other Eric was there. Eric Lang. Eric Lang, yeah. He's tall too, oh, not 6'4". How, how many more people can we handle the new location? Good question. We don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stop doing that. It's big. It's a lot bigger. Yeah, there's a- uh, give up on putting this behind There's gonna be a long. large, larger, uh, main hall and there will be a very large vendor hall so they'll all be in one space um, which is going to be exciting I hope that uh, I hope that publishers will be happy in there I know that you know because the new space that they redid uh, what which room is that which ballroom is that aviator ballroom aviators that one's a great ball ballroom and it's nice but people are frustrated because they removed but I go in there and it's crazy busy so I don't I don't know what the expectation is Obviously, it'll be better if they're all together anyway, because people just snake through and see everything. Yeah. And then we're still at the spring. We still have them. We take half the ballroom, I guess, for or three quarters of the ballroom. No, no, not half. Uh, yeah, the edges. So the, yeah, the sides of the ballroom. So are, it's three quarters of that, because one of it is one, one quarter of it is the is SDJ. SDJ. Yeah. Because um, they don't are they open all night though? They just don't. Because we used to close it, which was a bummer. Hey, Jeff Anderson's in the chat. Hey, Jeff. Get on that hacking. Every, everything is bigger by about, as everything's bigger in Texas. Everything is bigger by about 50%, but we're not going to grow by 50%. Yeah, that would be 4,500, but I don't think we want to go that high. Is this Walter? Oh, it is Walt. Hey, Walt. Looking forward to volunteering the Hot Games room again this year. And what all he said is true. Get your tickets now. It's true. It's a great event. And it's, hopefully, we're going to be in the other space this time, right? The other one we were in last year was too Yeah, noisy. we're in the ballroom down on the Second yeah, floor, it's, we actually have much, much more space, but it's this only is back at Gen Con, by the way. Yeah, we're back to Gen Flipping Con. Flipping back and forth. Um, that it's much, much more space, but it's not that many more tables ultimately. Oh, uh, it's a, it's almost twice as many tables as we really. Have. I thought we were only going to get like a third. No, nope. 
Okay, twice as much. Cool. So there you go. All right. But it's already almost sold out. So uh, <laughs> try to get days are, when you the can, days are pretty and open. then get some generics, and we'll try yeah, to get. It's you open in. from noon till midnight every day. So you can you can bribe Chad. He's Actually, in there. It's He's going to help run it with Doris. Midnight. Yeah, Chad <laughs> Roberts is in the room. He's, he's he might be be able to influence. I don't know. He'll probably kill me for saying that. <laughs> don't get right. level Lincoln. I'm nothing's gonna happen. What are we gonna do? It's restrictions of letting people in. We only have so many tables. Um, right. Part of the issue is you know you have to accommodate for larger groups potentially at each spot. So I think we kind of make it for six per table. Six chairs per table, but we usually yeah, that's, the average is like four point five. Yeah, five people per table. Um, you know, some are three and some are five. So, yep. And I guess that's it. Uh, we'll be back in two up. weeks, which is will be a true episode, I guess. True. Well, this what, is this season? is this is a winging it episode. Oh, this is our live episode, which we're not calling the board game geek show. It's the BG show live. Okay. Right, different name. I'm gonna put the Wait, tag on it. I think I'll put oh, the thumbnail put the on it when it's all done. Put the intro music. Oh, you can't. You can't edit these after the fact. Yeah, there is like a little bit of editing tools in YouTube. No, they took it away. They took them away because I was gonna trim your mom off. Oh, the mom. mom <laughs> but I couldn't you. do it. Thanks, mom. Hey, she's an older lady. She can... Thank you. Well, it's not Alzheimer's. I don't think I'll anybody that. knew that you were alive. And it just like just just weird. I can like, only say it so many times. It was this her, weird but... stagnant like first. 30 minutes of that episode or that, well, that we we're also it. talking with each other which yeah. some people were frustrated by that but um we hadn't seen dave real life, in people. forever we're a real life show hmm? what <laughs> i'm just messing around i said we hadn't seen dave Bo in a while so that oh dave Bo, yeah you had to you had we were talking about going to see movies and then he went to go see a movie at the chinese but he didn't see it in the main theater it's like Terrible. what are you doing going to not the main theater yeah the chinese um all right is, that, is anybody going to see solo yeah, I want to go see that. We're not, because we got games to play. We got a convention. To, convention to run. A convention to attend. Nikki and I are going to, I guess, we were talking about seeing it Friday night. No, Thursday, Thursday night. night but yeah, which would be, be hard. That would be um, irresponsible. Yeah. We're going to try to see it when we return um, before it leaves our favorite theater that I always talk about, which I won't talk about again already in this episode. Oh, that's neat. Someone says, "Oh, you need to watch more, more headbands." Headbands. I wish I they're neat. Here's the thing. I watched them record that episode of the headbands and they had to take so you would record like 2 to 3 minutes of video and then they would have to rest for 2 to 3 minutes because of the pain. Well, Nikki was the one Aaron, Dave by being under the table. Aaron and I were all able hours. to lie down. Nikki had to prop herself up cuz she's oh shorter. God. So we So she was in a stress position while we should have actually made shorter legs to put on that table so that we could all just lay down and put our hand up. It would be weird though. It would be. It was trying to. Could you get little chairs it. underneath the table? You couldn't sit on our table. No, we small. we had to lay. You know, we were all laying like this under the table. You know, it was all four of us. Um, yeah, puppet episodes are hard. We that wanted was, to do because they record. Do we? Do you want to spoil? Yeah. So it? well, you could tell. You could see where you see our hands. So we shoot the episode and then we edit it and then we play it back. And and Dave is the performer, so he wanted to get his performances right. And I'm like, Dave, people are going to laugh because we're terrible. And uh, it was still really fun. Nikki, in the beginning, in the intro, had to do both mine and her puppet and reacting. And then I was animating the little boxes on sticks. Uh, I loved doing all that, but holy cow, was that hard. Uh, and it was a hard edit um, because we we it wasn't a clean run you know we had to i think we didn't stop though i think we did just keep the cameras running but holy cow it probably took us i was hoping that we would have a 20 minute episode and then we would puppet it for like an hour and we had an hour episode i think after editing and a two and a half to three hour performance because we just you know we we're trying to get things smoother but dave was funny because everybody else was fouling up and didn't make any difference. It's it fun. Really we wanted to do code names. That was going to be the next episode, and it got nominated, and so we had to just rush it into into production just so we could have it for the uh, STJ nominations, and it won. Funny. 
hearing you talk about that. I mean, even I don't do game night with multiple cameras and all this, and yet my filming time is usually twice at least what whatever the broadcast time is. Yeah, at least, right? There's always just doing things again and realizing yeah. something could play better, that you could do something better. Yes, just saying over and over again. Yeah. Hey, right. Jared. Is so all really those board game media con content creators, give them some love, man. It takes a lot of work. It is work. It's really hard. As we stare off into space. Yeah, we're like, yeah. Hard work. We um, should have seen us scrambling to set up this. Yeah, we did it. We <laughs> was a uh, was last a different, minute we thing. We put games away and then we switched the angles. So it's uh, slightly different. Hopefully it'll work for Scott every time. This is where he wants to do. Yeah, it looks, I think it's good because it doesn't have. There's no walls. Just no games. Walls. It's consistent. Yeah, all games behind you. Yeah. Eric's well, smoother yeah. now. You get we some, look better. Yeah, you get some bandwidth. Too. Oh, I really, I didn't turn on my light. <laughs> oh, we have a little more fill light here. I think you said something about turning stuff on. Was that what you were supposed to turn on? Probably, but I was, I didn't go through the recording checklist because I'm not recording right now. So I didn't set everything up, do all that stuff. Ooh. All right. That's well, not... we're kind of running out of steam here. At least I am. I don't know about you guys. That's right. So what time is it? 1051. We have nine more minutes. Can we fill nine more minutes? Yeah. And call it on Eva. <laughs> Jerry <laughs> says great show tonight. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jared. Looking forward to seeing See you. See you soon. That's right. I took out all those games out of the flea market so you can't buy them. What? Oh, was he seeing stuff he wanted? Jared is a cherry picker. He knows, well, Jared has a very deep knowledge of old games, right? So he knows what is valuable and not. Yeah, valuable. but is that what he's buy buying them for? Or is he buying no, them? No, no. But, you know, it's fun to find in a flea market, like, good, yeah, get a good find deal. deals or find yep. gems and things. So don't worry. I'm going to look at it all before they all go live. It's all going to be picked over. We can just. Good luck. It's only 2,000 games. Only 2,000? Oh, that's a lot of games. It really is. It's so many. Well, there's more. We have some things here that we're going to bring yeah, no, too. Hey, Jeff, I got another tub of games for you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Maybe two. Uh, <laughs> it's not just for that, though. How big is the BGG library? It is over 6,000 titles. We bring them to the show. We're going to grow it, too. It's going to be bigger next year. Because we'll have more space. Yeah. Hey, well, somebody we... wants to do a secret Hitler video already. We have to bring more copies of the deal? Like if we're actually increasing, we may have to uh, at least the hot stuff, right? We might need to get and bone up an extra copy for each one. Yeah, because usually we bring three back, and it's funny, of course, how three copies is perfectly fine for many titles and other games. You want six, but you may not know. Which game have you played? War that games. Sue Park. Sue Park asks, "Do any of you play war games? Anyone on the BGG staff play them?" Play what? I don't know. War, war games. games. War game. War games, but I haven't played any in a very long time. Nope. My experience is Memoir. The closest. That's it. Memoir Forty Four. Yeah, which I played a lot with the neighbor. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're the, the long you've time. played them more recently. That's for yeah. sure. It's been a long time since I played any war. But games. I would not call myself a war gamer. I'm I mean, trying to think of anybody else on staff. Uh, Roger. He plays war games. Oh yeah, Roger. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely, I mean, I know that's my, my big drawback is I have no idea what's happening in the world of war games and what's new and what's exciting and what I can't compare them to anything. It's come, like, I don't, I just have this big black hole of knowledge there, which I will perfectly admit. <laughs> perfectly admit your imperfection of not playing the war games. It's just, it's man, it's rough. And then, but I mean, I do that all the time where I'm just like, I wish I knew about the Indian game market. Well, according to uh, Govin, there's not much of an Indian game. Yeah, but what he's some, saying? I know there's some there. Uh, so Jeff I, is known for teaching Magic Realm. Do you guys have any go-to classic games you like to teach at cons? I don't have any. I'm always just teaching one of the new games. Like at the SDJ stuff, I'll be teaching something. I mean, I actually know more of the games this time, so I can probably teach them. Although I think I taught... Something in Azul incorrect based. Oh, yeah, we played it incorrectly before. Azul. We, wasn't it Azul last year? No, it was uh, Eldorado. No, not Eldorado. 
there was something we got wrong in, uh, in Azul, just a minor thing. And uh, we realized it later. So I taught it incorrectly. I'd like to teach Tigris and Euphrates, but no one ever asked me to teach it. <laughs> I, if you I want to learn Tigris and Euphrates, I will uh, teach you. Tigris and Euphrates with us. Yeah, I would play. I would play Tigris and Euphrates. But you wanted to play Lord of the Rings. Oh, Lord of the Rings too. Which you taught? Yeah, didn't you? I did. Do we have Dave there that day? Yeah, we mm -hmm. did, didn't we? Yeah. Or was it Rusty? Yeah, Lord of the Rings, man. I I got a newfound love for that. Yeah, we played game. it twice in the last month. Yeah, month and a half. Hmm. Great. That sounds good. Yeah. Right? Uh, like we we know he teaches the mind a lot. Yes, I, I I mean last year I'm trying to remember. It's mostly I taught the the SDJ titles just because I loved El Dorado, so I was teaching that repeatedly and fixing arrows because there were a bunch of people playing incorrectly. But aside from that, often I just walk around and I watch people play games, and I feel weird jumping into a game and playing. Just I feel like I should be. Just making sure everything's cool at the show. <laughs> so then I don't play stuff. I'll bring innovation. Lord of the Rings. For me, Lord of the Rings co-op, not the card game. Uh, Govind okay. says, there are many hidden games that are passed down to generations. However, the younger generations have no clue. That's too bad. Well, that's going to be your goal, right? To help introduce the new stuff to Germany. Got to start your own company in India. <laughs> So yeah. they want a preview of uh, upcoming uh, game night. Well, I'll give you some hints. So the first nine games will be <laughs> Panic Mansion, <laughs> Dragon's Breath. Uh, what's the other kid's game? Oh, uh, Emoji. 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 <laughs> we will not. I will, actually it won't be the first next nine because we already did the mine. Although it'll Luxor. be reposted, and then we'll have Luxor. Azul. Ganshan Clever. We already did Azul. Azul. Uh, Ganshan Clever, Quacksalver, Von Quidlinburg, Quidlinburg, and Heaven and Ale. And oh, then and hopefully Pandemic and Legacy Pandemic. Season 2. So that's the next 10 episodes. So And then and then two discussion videos. One for the Kinderspiel and one for the SDJ Kinderspiel. But after that... After that will be... I may hope, have already mentioned the game. I have like mentioned in a previous ago. episode what we were hoping that it would be. Uh, and you said... Well, I was talking about the episode I'm on. Oh, yeah, Lord of the Rings. I'm on the Lord of the Rings. Maybe that would be the season over. I could probably edit that one. Yeah, that's going to be a long one. I think I screwed up a bit. You have to fix. What did you mess up? You didn't mess anything yeah, up. Yeah, there's some mess ups there. Eh, maybe. <laughs> but there's a couple others. We have... Candyland. Uh, I, I mean, I already mentioned it, so I'll say it again. We have Elgator uh, did you say Under it? the Pyramid. Yeah, we Elgator. mentioned in a previous episode we, that we played it. I watched them play it. It's very good. It was great. It's a very good feeling of Elgator with an expansion. It comes out very good. It comes out very nice, nicely done. Nicely, in my done. opinion. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we had Aaron back for that one. Um, Aaron is not living in Los Angeles anymore, so we don't have him as much. Um, he comes down. He was actually down for two weeks, and we filmed three days with him, which was great. Um, fortunately, he's going to be back down in June while we're on the cruise, so we might not get him until i'm not sure if he'll be able to be in any of the sgj stuff which is a drag because um he has a different he's more of a war gamer there's our one war gamer that's true in uh bgg he we've had discussions about uh him and mark johnson playing a war game uh war game together as an episode that just hasn't happened and now that aaron's up north it's a little bit tougher it's not he's not too far away but it's still tough um cuz aaron's great he's our heavy gamer rules explainer <laughs> every gamer rules explainer yep. uh they can do well with that but he is not as comfortable as aaron aaron is much much more comfortable doing those games um we might have to import matthew monin again for uh, and we need to get eric out i know well i was hoping that and was going to happen before uh and maybe other people japan but there's just no way it was his birthday the day before he left so i think eric turned 25 so he's an old yeah, man congratulations now. happy birthday Half of me turned 25. <laughs> what happened to the other half? <laughs> that also turned 25. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> you don't look a day over He does it. You don't look 24. You don't look a day over 49. All right. Um, all right. Well, I think we should Did wrap we it up. Oh, got one more minute, man. Oh, my yeah. gosh. The chat is just going crazy. They're all coming on. Darn it. <sighs> Poop. I'm sad.
Have you played Secrets of the Lost Temple? No. Not the Abandoned Earth. He's not an old man. All right. I think we will wrap it up. I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question. Maybe we should just do a Q&A one day and not talk about other stuff. Maybe. Well, we do those occasionally. But we need to have Eric on for yeah, that. Have Eric. We'll have Steph on, too, one of these days. Yes. Well, I just yell out. She's been streaming. Steph Hodge has yeah. been streaming already some interesting things, so you guys should pay attention to that. Um, and we're going to have her do some stuff with us. She wants to be on the BGD show, and that's going to happen. Probably have rest, uh, big announcement there at the end. Don't you think so? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it just hadn't been talking She's awesome. Before. And we're going to yeah. have Rodney on to some stuff, too. Yeah, that's, Rodney, too. We want him to do a lot of things. We actually have already planned a bunch of stuff. Um, he just had some things that had to be done. Uh, yeah, he already made commitments on it. Tabletop I'm, day. I think there's still all, more yeah. things that he's got to do. Um, but we're building holes in the schedule to start doing things together. So he was going to come out before tabletop day and he got sick. Um, and he got it together for tabletop day because it was a couple hours. But if we filmed uh, the day before that, he probably would have gotten hoarse again. So, um, which is a bummer because we did have him in LA, but couldn't do it. Um, but again, soon we'll do it. Absolutely. I would. I can't wait to say, "Hey, Rodney, will you teach us something?" Teach us how to play, Kemet. <laughs> Kemet. Kemet. No, I don't. Cool. Nikki could probably teach that one now. No. Maybe. You want to say bye, Nikki, real quick? You want to do a photo bomb? Photo bomb. A video bomb. There's a little bit of room. Squeeze. Can come in. in here. She can block the glare here. Nikki didn't want to be on, but we're gonna make her come in. Mess? No, no, you look mess. great. You look yeah, better than I do. Such a liar. Come in. Come, sir. come in the middle. Br bridge the chairs. Yeah. Hey, there's Nikki P. Hey, there's the kitty. Oh, kitty. <laughs> What's that kitty's name? Emmett. Emmett. Yeah. How many cats do you three. have? Three. He's got three cats. Three cats in the yard. All right. Life used to be so hard. He's named Emmett for Emmett in the Lego movie. Ah. Okay. I thought it was for M. Emmett Walsh. M. In the Lego movie. A spherical object floating above the highway. Because <laughs> he's orange. Just orange. like construction outfit. Come yeah. see Nikki at BGG Con Spring, too. She's going to be there with uh, Matigo Surfing Matigo Meeple. Slash surfing Surfing Meeple. Sur surfing <laughs> surfing, surfing meeple. Syrup and Meeples. <laughs> what did you say, Eric? With Treasure Island. <laughs> yep, she's got to have Treasure, Treasure Island. Island. That, uh, oh, yeah. Chad we Roberts have Treasure Island. Yeah, I want to play that again, actually. It's, it's cool. It's, yeah. We actually have the rules this time, so we could play, we could play, play it correctly. more correctly. And Micropolis. <laughs> correctly. And Micropolis. Oh, Micropolis yeah. is great. <laughs> that one's still not available in the States, but that was our last episode. just went up uh, last Thursday. So it was fun, and it's a great game. I've been seeing the comments, though. Some people think it's too complicated, nice too many metrics. No, no, it's okay. I think what? Wrong. Which one? Micropolis. Oh, no. You know, I don't no. agree with that. It's a silly game. It's a silly place. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Eric. <laughs> See you guys soon. Yep, All right. two days. That's right. Double dance. Bye. Take care, everyone. How do I turn this off? <laughs>